भगवते ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय चैप्टर वन टेक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव भीष्म द्रोण प्रमुखता सर्वे शाम च महिक्षिताम उच पार्थ पश्यतान संवेतान कुरु नीति In the presence of Bhishma, Drona, and all the other chieftains of the world, the Lord said, "Just behold, Partha, all the kurus assembled here." Text twenty-six. Tatra pasyanti sthinar Partha pitra nath pita mahan acharyan ma tulan bhatra na putran potran sakhin sathaha shravshuran sahar devshe cheva. There, Arjuna could see, within the midst of the armies of both parties, his fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, and all his father-in-law and well-wishers. Twenty-seven. Tan samikshya sa konteya sarvan bandhun. वस्थितान विष्टो विशिदनी दम ब्रवीत व्हेन द सन ऑफ व्हेन द सन ऑफ कुंती अर्जुना सो ऑल दिस डिफरेंट ग्रेड्स ऑफ फ्रेंड्स एंड रिलेटिव्स ही बिकेम ओवरवेल्म्ड विद कंपैशन एंड स्पोक दस एक्स 28 अर्जुन वाचा दृष्टवेम स्वजनम कृष्णा युयुत्सुम समुपस्थिताम Arjuna said, "My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up." Twenty-nine. Vyaptu shacha sharire me rom har shacha cha jayate. My whole body is trembling. My hair is standing on end. My bow Gandiva is slipping from my hand, and my skin is burning. Text thirty. Na cha akno me avastha tum dhamtiv cha me manha nimitani cha pashyami. I am now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself, and my mind is reeling. I see only causes of misfortune, O Krishna, killer of the Geshi demon. Thirty-one. Na cha shre onu pasyami hatva swajan mahave na kangke vidyam Krishna na cha rajyam sukhani cha. I do not see how any good can come of killing my own kinsmen in this battle. Nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom, or happiness. Text thirty-two to to thirty-five. Kim no rajan govin kim bhoge raji vitenva yesha marthe kangsitam no rajam bhoga sukhani cha. मधुसूदन अलोक्य राज हेतो किन्नु मही कृते O Govinda, oh, of what avail to us are a kingdom, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we desire them are now arrayed on this battlefield? O oh, Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal Uncles, father-in-laws, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and other relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties 
and are standing before me, why should I wish to kill them, even though they might otherwise kill me? O maintainer of all living entities, I am not prepared to fight with them even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. What pleasure will we derive from killing the sons of Dhridrashtra? Tasman Harya Vayam Hantum, Dhatrashtrana Sam, Saban Dhavan, Swajanam Hikatam Sakha, Ukhinaha Sayam Madhava. Sin will overcome us if we slay the, such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Drudrashtra and our friends. What should we gain, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune? And how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? Acts 37 and 38. Yadhyapya yete na pasyanti lobho pahachet saha ulkshaya kritam dosham mitra drohe cha patakam katham na geyam samabhi papa dasmani va vartitum ulkshaya kritam dosham Prapasya Dibhar Janardana. O oh, Janardana, although these men, their hearts overtaken with greed, see no fault in killing, killing one's family or quarreling with friends, why should we, who can see the crime in destroying a family, engage in these acts of sin? X 39. Kulkshe Pranashayanti Kuldharma Sanatanaha. With the destruction of dynasty, the eternal family tradition is vanquished, and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligion. Text 40. Adharma bhi bhavat krishna pardushayanti kul striha srishu dushtasu vashrane when irreligion is prominent in the family, O Krishna, the women of the family become polluted, and from the degradation of womanhood, O descendant of Rishni, come unwanted progeny. Text 41. Sankaro narkaye kulgna nam kulseyacha patanti pitro huyo sham lukti pindo dakriya. An increase of unwanted population certainly causes hellish life, both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition. The ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performance of offering them food and water are entirely stopped. X 42. Doshe rete kulgnanam vansankar karke utsadhanyate jati dharma kuldharmashta Shashvata. By the evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children, all kinds of community projects, <laughs> welfare, uh, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are de devastated. X 43. Utsankul Dharmanam Munusya Yarnam Janardhan Narkeniatam Vaso. O oh Krishna, maintainer of the people, I have heard by disciplic succession that those who, whose family traditions are destroyed dwell always in hell. X 44. Aho bat mahat papam kartum vevasita vayam yadraje sukh lobhen hantum swajan mudheta. Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. We are intent on killing our own kinsmen. Text 45. Yadi maam prati karam shastram shastraneha dhatrashtra arane hanyu stanme shetram bhavet. Better for me, if the sons of Dhridrashtra, weapons in hands, were to kill me, 
unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I Thank think we're doing 45. I think I thought uh, Jyoti Mataji said 45, no? 46 is the last verse, Mataji. 46, Mataji. 25 to 46. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, go on. Anja Vacha Ev Mukta Varjunaha Sankhe Rathopasat Upavishat Visarje Sashadam Chapam Choksam Vi Gnaman Saha Anjaya said, Arjuna, having thus spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed with grief. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, um, Girish Prabhu and Hitesh Prabhu. Thank you so much for reciting these verses. Okay. I'm just going to um, share my screen. Can everybody see? Yes, you can see. Yes, Mataji. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so today we are going to um, obviously continue um, chapter one. And today we have quite a few verses to discuss from 32 to 35. And there are some really important points. Um, let's see how, how well we can do with it. We'll try our best um, to discuss this. So we'll just recite the verses again. Kim no Rajena Govinda, Kim Bhoge Jivite Nava, Yesha Marte Kangshitam no Rajam Bhoga Sukhanicha, Ta Ime Vashishta Yudhe, Pranam Styaktva Dhananicha, Acharya Pitara Putras, Tataiva Chapita Maha, Matula Swashura Pautra, Syala Sambandina Stata, Etanna hantu mechami, natno pima du sudana. Apitrai lokya rajasya, heto kim nu mahi krite, nihatya drita rashtrana, ka priti janardana. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. I'll read the translation. If anybody wants to read the purport, please let me know once I finish the translation. O Govinda, of what avail to us are a kingdom, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed on this battlefield? O Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and other relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me, why should I wish to kill them? even though they might otherwise kill me. O maintainer of all living entities, I am not prepared to fight with them even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. What pleasure will be will we derive from killing the sons of Dhritarashtra? Does anybody want to read the purport? Yes, Prabhu Mataji, shall I? Yes, please, Jodi Mataji. Arjuna has addressed Lord Krishna as Govinda because Krishna is the object of all pleasures for cows and the senses. By using this significant word, Arjuna indicates that Krishna should understand what will satisfy Arjuna's senses. But Govinda is not meant for satisfying our senses. If we try to satisfy the senses of Govinda, however, then automatically our own senses are satisfied. Materially, everyone wants to satisfy his senses, and he wants God to be the order supplier for such satisfaction. The Lord will satisfy the senses of the living entities as much as they deserve, but not to the extent that they may cov covet. But when one takes the opposite way, namely, when one tries to satisfy the senses of Govinda without desiring to satisfy, satisfy one's own senses, then by the grace of Govinda, all desires of the 
living entity are satisfied. Arjuna's deep affection for community and family members is exhibited here partly due to his natural compassion for them. He is, the, he is therefore not prepared to fight. Everyone wants to show his opulence to friends and relatives. But Arjuna fears that all his relatives and friends will be killed on the battlefield and he will be unable to share his opulence after victory. This is a typical calculation of material life. The transcendental life, however, is different. Since a devotee wants to satisfy the desires of the Lord, he can Lord willing accept all kinds of opulence for the service of the Lord. And if the Lord is not willing, he would not accept a farthing. Arjuna did not want to kill his relatives. And if there were any need to kill them, he desired that Krishna kill them personally. As this at this point, he did not know that Krishna had already killed them before they're coming into the uh, battlefield and that he was only to become an instrument for Krishna. This fact is disclosed in following chapters. As a natural devotee of the Lord, Arjuna did not like to retaliate against his miscreant cousins and brothers, but it was the Lord's plan that they should be killed. The devotee of the Lord does not retaliate against the wrongdoer, but the Lord does not tolerate any mischief done to the devotee by the miscreants. The Lord can ex excuse a person on his own account, but he excuses no one who has done harm to his devotees. Therefore, the Lord was determined to kill the miscreants, although Arjuna wanted to excuse them. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Jolie Mataji. So it is a very, very important purpose, and we'll delve into that once we just recite our prayers. Om Agyan Vandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Sindhu Vapate Isha Gupta Sanka Tatanta Namaste Shri <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I'm just going to request everybody to please mute if you're not already, because there is a lot of background sound and then it disturbs everybody. Um, thank you. So, um, okay, let's move on because there is a lot that we have to discuss uh, in this verse. Okay. Right. So over here, the first thing that we are seeing is that um, Arjuna at this moment is thinking of his own personal sense gratification. So um, obviously he's thinking that, you know, he will, he will not be able to enjoy, um, he will not be able to share anything because whenever we, as, as human beings, we have this tendency that we want to love, be loved, we want to share, we want to enjoy with our friends and relatives. And if that is not there, then what is the point of um, any kind of um, enjoyment in this material world? So Arjuna, obviously at this moment, 
is thinking of his own sense of gratification. And um, he, he's used the term Govinda. Now, Prabhupada is already explaining in the purport that Govinda is the knower of all senses and one who gives pleasure. So over here, Arjuna is indicating that um, Krishna should understand what will satisfy Arjuna's senses, right? But then Prabhupada goes on to explain that if we try to satisfy the senses of Govinda, then automatically our own senses will be satisfied. But what happens is that in the beginning stages of our Krishna consciousness, we have this uh, tendency that uh, we, you know, even when it comes to services, we tend to um, take those services which, will, which we like. So we're not really thinking whether this is going to give pleasure to, um, you know, to the devotees or to Krishna. Because that is how we've been in our material life. So we still are carrying our material conditioning. Because in the material life, um, it's always about, you know, what makes me happy. And when we are in the transitional stage where we are moving from the material life and starting our Krishna conscious journey, we carry that conditioning with us. And that is why it is so very important that we get guidance from an expert spiritual master. Because we may think that what I am doing, or I'm, I'm doing service, but I'm not realizing that even here, I'm carrying my conditioning and the service that I'm also doing is not really just to please um, Krishna or to please the devotees. It is because I like this particular service. So Krishna right now is depicting that stage. He's in that stage. And as we've all heard previously that um, Krishna is using, um, sorry, Krishna is not depicting that stage, Arjuna is. So here um, Arjuna is being used as, you know, as an instrument through, through whom um, Krishna is giving all of us these instructions. So right now Arjuna is in that stage where we all are, all of us conditioned souls, we tend to uh, think that what, what pleases me is more important. And that's why in the purport, Prabhupada also says that we treat God, we treat Krishna like our order supplier. Krishna should give us what we think will make us happy. And that's another problem that, um, in the beginning stages, whether it is our material life or spiritual life, but sometimes when there are uh, problems and calamities, um, obviously we are not able to see the bigger picture. And sometimes the instructions that is given to us by the senior devotees or our spiritual master, we may think that this is so difficult, it's almost impossible for me to do. And we think it is not right for us, but as time progresses and you look back and you think that that was the best thing that happened to me because if that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't be where I am. And that is why it is so very important to always seek guidance, whether it is your spiritual master or whether it is your, so whether it is your Diksha gurus or whether it is your Siksha gurus, you must always seek guidance from somebody who has been on this path already before you and has seen you know uh, what uh, what problems one could encounter so um, Prabhupada here is trying to explain to us that we must try to satisfy the senses of Govinda so in the following chapters that is what Krishna is going to ask Arjuna to do that you know you just be an instrument you just fight because I am asking you to fight the outcome of the war is already decided, pre-decided. You know, all of these soldiers will die, but you just be an instrument. So the point being made here is that um, Arjuna do it just to give me pleasure. And once you do it to give me pleasure, you will be satisfied. So that's that's the whole, uh, and, and we, we understand why Arjuna is calling uh, Krishna Govinda here. So yes, 
Arjuna is representing a soul that is using Dharma Shastra to avoid fighting. So, you know, all of, like Arjuna is giving so many various reasons why he should not fight. And I know the other speakers have been discussing all the reasons. In this particular verse, the, um, the main reason that he's using is that he will not be able to enjoy. Because if there is nobody, then he will not be able to enjoy. So that is the reason that is he's focusing on, on these particular set of verses. But um, like Prabhupada said that our only goal should be, and there is a very beautiful verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, which says, Oh, best among the twice born, it is therefore concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging the duties prescribed for one's own occupation according to caste divisions and orders of life is to please the personality of Godhead. So, Arjuna is being asked to discharge his duties as a Kshatriya. As a Kshatriya, his duty is to fight. But just to please the personality of Godhead, not on his own whim. He is being asked by Krishna to fight. So the bottom line and the, the main thing that we need to understand over here is that our aim must always be to please the personality of Godhead very, very important. And that is the focus of uh, what Prabhupada is explaining in this, uh, in this purport. There are, of course, other very important points, and we will come to that. But this was the first, uh, first thing that Prabhupada is talking about. So here now, in the purport, Prabhupada says this, Arjuna fears that all his relatives and friends will be killed on the battlefield, and he will be unable to share his um, opulence after victory. So again, he wants to be happy with, you know, society, friends, and, and love, and all of that. And in one of the lectures that Prabhupada gave, he described this mentality as uh, smashan vairagya. Now, what does smashan vairagya mean? So Prabhupada explains that um, in India, and I guess in India, it doesn't happen in other places, but in India, you know, when when a person dies and then you are taking the, the dead body and you go to the smashan and, and you know, then the people notice that, you know, this man, he's died, he's left behind his family, his wealth, his riches, his children, his friends, everything, everything. He's not taking anything with him. The body is being burned. And then, you know, th these kind of thoughts start coming to your mind that, you know, what am I doing here? Um, why am I struggling so much? Um, I should I should realize that you know this is such a waste. So all of these thoughts, all of these realizations come to you. Unfortunately, the moment you leave this crematorium ground, you're back to being the same thing. You again re-enter the whole rat race of the material life where you start thinking, how do I make more money and how do I make more money and how do I do this and buy a bigger house and get a better car and and all of that. So this is called Smashan Vairagya, which is very, very uh, temporary. And Prabhupada is using this, this here because uh, what he's trying to say is that- Don't forget um, to take your hay fever tablet, Nita. I'm sorry, I'm just going to try and unmute people if I can. Okay. So here, um, Arjuna is saying that Api trilokya rajasya heto kimnu mahi krite. He says, even if I am given the three worlds, I am not willing to fight. So you see, this is, you know, this kind of vairagya comes when you are uh, in, that, in that mode, when you're saying that all, all of this is just temporary. So the sentiment that Arjuna is feeling is a temporary sentiment because he's seeing his cousins, his friends, his relatives, his, you know, his guru, his grandfather, so everybody on the battlefield. And he's realizing that, you know, what is the use of all of these things? And that is why he's getting this uh, feeling because he's so attached to his family. So he's getting this feeling where he says that, you know, uh, I will not be able to enjoy anything if all of these people are dead. And, and this is what Prabhupada is trying to explain. This is just a temporary sentiment. 
everybody goes through the sentiment once they are out of the crematorium ground, we are back to the normal rat race of, of the life. And um, I, I um, read a very interesting story and I thought I'll share it with all of you. So once there was, a, there was this man in the village and he saw uh, four people carrying the uh, dead body. And I'm not sure if many of you have experienced this, but in, in India, you know, when uh, they take the dead body to the um, crematorium ground, they uh, chant, you know, uh, they say the names, they say Ram Nam Satya Hai. So they keep saying that Ram Nam Satya Hai. So this, this um, young man, he thought, you know, why are they saying this? So he went and asked the people who were um, carrying the, the body, he said, why are you saying this? And, you know, the people kind of thought, I mean, you know, everybody knows this. Why is he asking such a silly question? But one of the elderly gentlemen explained to him that, you know, that it is to remind all of us that death is inevitable. Sorry. Yeah, so it is just to remind everybody that death is inevitable and God is the ultimate truth. So after this elderly man has explained this to him, the man, you know, this young man thought over it and he thought that it'll be such a great service if I constantly remind this to everybody, right? So what he did was that uh, he would greet people with this. He would greet people saying, Ram Nam Satya Hai. Now the villagers started avoiding him thinking that he is a madman. Why did the villagers start avoiding him? Because for that moment, when they were chanting this, when they were taking the dead body, they realized, they were thinking that yes, death is inevitable. And the moment all of the ceremony is over, they again forgot about it. So this is an example of Smashan Vairagya that, you know, they forgotten that death is inevitable. And they again have gone back to um, this rat race. So I thought this was a very um, interesting story for all of us to remember, because I think a lot of us go through these kind of sentiments, you know, that we have these uh, passing phases and we get these sentiments. We do realize, but then sometimes we don't apply it. We don't know what to do about it. Um, and that is what here Arjuna is going through those kind of sentiments over here. Right. So the next very important thing over here to notice is um, Arjuna is addressing Krishna using different terms. And there is a specific reason why he is using these uh, different terms. And it's very important for us to understand. So we understood why he used Govinda. Then he says Madhusudana. He says, um, he addresses Krishna as Madhusudana. The reason he addresses Krishna as Madhusudana is he is reminding Krishna and in a way actually chastising Krishna that, you know, you are the killer of Madhu demon, right? And I know you have killed Madhu demon, but you are not known as, um, you know, um, the killer of uh, Yashoda or the killer of Nanda. You did not kill your family. So why are you asking me to kill my family, right? So he's saying that, you know, you may, you may induce me, but I am not going to do it because you also did not kill your family. You killed the demons, but you did not kill your own family. So Krish Arjuna says, I will not kill them even if it means I will be killed. Gnata api, even if it means that I will be killed. So all of this conversation between Arjuna and Krishna is taking place because Krishna wants to give us the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. Each and every one of us, like Arjuna, is so attached to our bodily conceptions. And not just our bodily conceptions, then it goes on to the expansion. So it is a, a question of I, me, and mine. So first I'm attached to my own body, then I'm attached to anything that is related to my body, which could mean my um, relations, like um, husband, wife, children, and then you know it goes on further, my house, my community, my country, my society. So it goes on. This kind of attachment to the bodily conceptions of life is called Hridaya Granthi. 
but it's a hard knot in the heart which is very 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 difficult to undo and in the bhagavatam there is a verse which says pumsha striya mithuni bhavam me etam tayor mitho hridaya granthim atu ahu ato griha kshetra sutapta viter janasya moho yam aham mameti the translation is the attraction between male and female is the basic principle of material existence on the basis of this misconception which ties together the hearts of the male and female one becomes attracted to his body home property children relatives and wealth in this way one increases life's illusions and thinks in terms of i and mine so this is the, this is the problem that all of us have where we start thinking of everything as i and mine we forget that the center of our entire existence is krishna this is illusion we start believing in this temporary existence in this temporary world so much that we forget that i am this permanent soul i am this eternal soul i belong to krishna this is temporary this body is temporary this relations are temporary this material world is temporary we are so caught up in this and that is why it is called hridaya granti this hard knot in the heart which is very very difficult to open or to break right so um so arjuna is also because he is feeling yes as a devotee he is also feeling compassion but he is also feeling the attachment that he has towards his family and that is why he is saying that he will not fight i will not fight even if it means that i will be killed i am willing to die on this battlefield but i will not fight no matter how much you induce me to fight this is what he is saying to krishna so so here uh, the question is that we spoken about um um smashan vairagya we need to understand what true vairagya is right so prabhupad is explaining that all of us uh, we we tend to think about you know <clears throat> this smashan vairagya yes we think about it because when we go through such kind of uh, feeling but now krishna is going to go beyond this bodily concept of life he is going to explain to us through arjuna that we have to think beyond this uh, body so this whole krishna conscious movement actually can be called the vairagya vidya because it is actually going to teach us what real renunciation is or what is the correct way to renounce right and this is a very very beautiful verse um there is a background story to it and i'm sure that some day we will cover that story but suffice to say that uh, this is a pastime between uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu and sarvabhauma bhattacharya um sarvabhauma bhattacharya was actually an impersonalist but after he met mahaprabhu he became a devotee he was a very very learned scholar of the vedas but he was an impersonalist and on meeting mahaprabhu he became such a pure devotee of the lord that he then um wrote 100 verses in glorification of chaitanya mahaprabhu um unfortunately all those verses uh, did not they, it's not available to us prabhupad says out of those 100 only two or four verses are available and one of the verses um is in the chaitanya charitamrit and it says um vairagya vidya nij bhakti yoga shikshartham eka purusha purana shri krishna chaitanya sharira dhari kripam budhir yastam aham prapadye the translation is let me take shelter of the supreme personality of godhead shri krishna who has descended in the form of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu to teach us real knowledge his devotional service and detachment from whatever does not foster krishna consciousness 
He has descended because he is an ocean of transcendental mercy. Let me surrender unto his lotus feet. So this is such a beautiful verse glorifying Mahaprabhu, but also talking about what Mahaprabhu has come to teach us. He has come to teach us the real knowledge. He has come to teach us about the devotional service. And he has come to teach us about how we should be detached from anything that is not uh, good for our Krishna consciousness. Right? So... Um, so it says over here, I'll just read the English translation of this because it's, it's the exact same thing. It says that by rendering devotional service unto the personality of God at Shri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Now the question here is in both the verses we are talking about knowledge. Now what is that knowledge? Would anybody like to share what, what do you understand? What is that knowledge that we are, we are talking about? You can unmute and, and um, give your comments. It's nice to have interactive classes, otherwise it's just me speaking. Hare Krishna Madhukumari. Yes, Padlika Mataji. Uh, is knowing ourselves and our relationship to Supreme Lord. Yes, yes, perfect. So the, the true knowledge is, sorry, I should go back. So the true knowledge is that when we know, yeah, when we know, so like, like it says here that in human uh, life, two things are required, gyan and vairagya. Gyan means I am not this body. This is the gyan. Once I have this gyan that I'm not this body, then how do I achieve the status of vairagya? The moment I realize that I am not this body, then obviously uh, my attachment to things that are related to this body will reduce. Because if I'm not this body, why will I be attached to the things that are related to just this body? I am the soul. So my attachment should be to who is part, whom am I a part of? Who should I be attached to? And that is the super soul. So that is the most important knowledge that one has to get. And then you can renounce. Then it, you are actually then truly renouncing. When we say renounce, it does not mean that you are becoming a sadhu or a sannyasi. True renunciation means that sthane sthita, in your situation where you are currently, you're still able to use each and everything in the service of Lord Krishna. Whether it is your uh, talent, whether it is your um, wealth, um, your um, relatives, because you can incite everybody. Uh, Prabhupada says that, you know, if, if one is a devotee, then when you have the altar at home, slowly, you know, even if not everybody in the house is a devotee, but slowly uh, Krishna consciousness starts because Krishna consciousness in, is in each and everybody. It just has to manifest and it, it will manifest. So that is the gyan, that is the knowledge that we have to have and then we can go to Vairagya and then we can have the true knowledge that whatever I am doing, I am doing it for um, Krishna. So <clears throat> obviously in the, in the further chapters, we will see how Krishna convinces Arjuna um, you know, through various processes and always comes to the conclusion that for Arjuna, as a Kshatriya, his duty is uh, to fight, right? And the other very important thing that uh, Prabhupada mentions in the purport is, since a devotee wants to satisfy the desires of the Lord, he can, Lord willing, accept all kinds of opulence for the service of the Lord. And if the Lord is not willing, he should not accept a farthing. So, um, in many places in the Bhagavatam and in other places, it says that the, uh, the sometimes opulences, um, sometimes opulences, beauty, wealth, knowledge can be uh, a negative factor in your uh, progress on your spiritual journey, which is true. But here, Prabhupada is very, very clearly saying in, in the purport that 
if you are able to use all your opulences for Krishna's service, then that is perfect. And he gives his own example uh, in, in some, some of the lectures and classes when he's talking or when he has room conversations. Many a times he says, um, he has said this, that um, Krishna was testing me. Because when Prabhupada was in his family life, he was a very successful businessman. He had his pharmaceutical business and he was, he was doing very well. But eventually, because of whatever reasons, the business then, the profit started going down. Um, he wasn't getting the support from his, uh, his family for his spiritual, on, on his Krishna conscious journey as well. So in, in a sense, all of the material things were being taken away from Prabhupada. And then when he started, you know, when he came to US and when, you know, he established the society, ISKCON society, and eventually things started, you know, uh, so many people joined him, his disciples. And then he, there was a time when he had, uh, there was so much opulence in ISKCON that Prabhupada said that now I, wherever I go, I live in palaces and I have um, servants wherever I go. I have cars at my disposal. I have 20 cooks. And the best thing is I don't even pay them any salary. They all want to do it out of love for me. So Prabhupada says that when Krishna took away everything from me, he was testing me. And now again, when he's given everything to me, he's testing me. And Prabhupada also said that, why do you think, he asked this question, um, why is Krishna giving me so much? And all his disciples who were surrounding him, they thought it's just a rhetorical question, which does not really deem an answer to it. But Prabhupada then answered and Prabhupada said that Krishna is giving me all this because I have never misspent, never wasted even a single farthing of Krishna's money. That is why. And it is so important for us to understand that whatever we are getting is Krishna's mercy. Whatever he takes away from us is Krishna's mercy. So seeing Krishna in each and every situation of your life, whether good or bad, is what Krishna consciousness is about. And that is what Prabhupada is teaching us. By this statement, what he's saying is, if Lord willing, and if you get it, then you use it. So the underlying word here again is Lord willing. So we must in our lives always remember that whatever is happening, especially when we are trying to become more and more Krishna conscious, always feel the presence of Krishna in your life. Anything that happens, you know, be grateful to Krishna because in the bigger picture, that is the right thing for you. Because like a parent will not do anything wrong for their children, Krishna is our eternal father. So he will never do anything wrong for us. So yeah, um, this is just, I've already spoken about this. Okay, another then again in the verse, I'm sorry, there are four verses which I'm trying to cover. So I'm trying to do as much justice as I, as I can. Um, again, Arjuna in the verse uses the term Janardana. He says, Ka Pritisya Janardana. So Arjuna is calling Krishna Janardana. And in the word to word, Prabhupada gives the translation, the meaning of Janardana is that uh, he's the maintainer of all living entities. So the question is that Krishna is everybody's maintainer. Why is he desiring everybody's death then? You know, he's, he's the maintainer. But then... Um, the word Janardhan has another meaning. And um, Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushan explains the meaning of Janardhan. He says, Jana means person and Ardhana means killer. So um, Janardhan, here um, when Arjuna is calling Krishna Janardhan, what he's suggesting is that if these people need to be killed, then you kill them. Why are you asking me to kill them? You kill them because if you kill all of them, you will not get any sinful reactions. So here addressing Janardhan also has a significance wherein Arjuna is saying, I don't want to kill them. So you go ahead and kill them because you are the, 
remover of the earth's burden you know you that is what you do you are like you are janardhan you are the killer of people who are a burden on this earth so you kill them and for that you will not get any sinful reaction as well so that is why uh, he is being addressed as as janardhan right so that's that's i think i have um, covered most of the important points from the verse and i'm just going to try and stop sharing the screen uh, in the meantime if anybody has any questions or comments or corrections reflections uh please please do share like i said it's nice to get some comments and you know interaction so that we know that we are kind of on the right track hari hari krishna apuji hari go sorry no i'm not sorry. sure who this is i can't see the name uh, i did say but let the other mother ji say please thank you okay who 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 wanted to speak oh, please sorry sorry mata ji thank you thank you mata ji hari krishna this is namrata mata ji uh, mata yes, ji thank you so much it was such a wonderful session because you answered some of my questions i had yesterday so thank you so much mata ji i just have one one question um yeah. thank you mata ji i just have one question mata ji and maybe because i'm still new to uh, new to krishna consciousness and i am i feel i'm trying my best there's no i haven't got there yet mataji but mm. it 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 is not i find sometimes it's very very difficult what i mean by very difficult after a day of a uh, busy work you know sorting kids out sorting family out and everything i always feel i leave my mala at the end of the day and you know when i want to listen to your chapter i want to do mala i don't want to sleep before it i don't know why can i not just sit down or have that I, which i want to give the time by the way why can't or what am i doing different than everybody else why am i not able to do my mala everything done first thing in the morning why is krishna coming to me at the end of the day why am i i'm begging to krishna that i want to do this first thing in the morning what am i doing wrong mata ji okay okay namrata mata ji first thing you need to understand that don't say that everybody can do it because uh, i don't know about the others but i struggle as well i struggle as well it's like you know all of us and I've, i have spoken to a lot of senior devotees we all have our phases we all have our good days and we have our bad days so it's not like you know this is going to be a, a ride where you know every day is going to be the same that that won't happen that doesn't happen um like i said i don't know about the others but that doesn't happen for for me and a lot of my other friends that i have been speaking to so that's the first thing so don't think that you're alone in this struggle we all are we all go through these things at times the second thing when you start your spiritual journey it is very very important that you make some changes in your life and if we don't make those changes then we will always struggle and i speak this from personal experience so the first time when i started doing my uh, uh, my chanting which is many many years back no actually not many years back actually not really many years back but i started and uh, you know i used to try and do eight rounds before i go to work and i used to do the other eight rounds when i came back from work um so i'm sharing this uh, personal and i have i you know i feel i always like to share such things because i feel if it helps people then that's great so uh, what happened was my children at that time were young and uh, when i used to come back from work after dinner and all of that i would sit and chant and i started thinking that it is taking away from my family time because it would take me at least an hour or so to to just do eight rounds and it was taking away from my family time so for a few months this continued like that but i was not able to sustain and whatever else then eventually again you know i was i went with a, a, you know again another enthusiasm no i'm going to somehow do it and all for that it does require some changes in your lifestyle and what i mean by that is that trying to go to sleep early is the most important thing because waking up early to finish your rounds before the day starts before you you are called on to perform your other duties because one cannot forget that one is still in the material world where you have to perform your duties to your family you know you going out to work 
all of those things do happen. So waking up in the morning to do your rounds is very important. Now, again, that is the ideal thing that does not happen every single day. Most important thing is when it doesn't happen, don't beat yourself, accept it. Accept it that, okay, I have not been able to do this today for whatever reasons, maybe my body was, is not coping, it's, it's you know, uh, I'm tired, I need whatever, I need the rest, it's fine. But don't give up, don't give up. Spiritual life is about trying and trying and trying and trying and praying for the mercy, praying to Krishna that, you know, I am trying, praying to Srila Prabhupada. I tell you one thing, um, in the beginning days of my journey, and I've said this before on this forum, um, I used to have a picture of um, Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet uh, hung up just above my bed. The reason being, Prabhupada once said that, um, what is the difficulty? I will kick away all the difficulty from your spiritual path. So whenever I used to be in trouble, I would just look at the lotus feet and I would say, this is your promise to me, so please help me. So like I said, don't, don't get discouraged. This happens in all of us, especially when we start our journey, even afterwards it happens. Don't get discouraged, keep trying, keep trying. Please bear in mind that even after many years of practicing Krishna consciousness, still sometimes such things will happen, but don't be discouraged. I hope that helps Namrata Mataji. So I'm not sure if she's still there. Okay. Um, Palika Mataji, you wanted to say something? Hare Krishna Madhukumari. I love the way you picked up different, you know, address Arjun uh, to, to, to Krishna and how you analyze each one. That was fantastic. I really like the way you, you plan your lesson and, uh, you know, how you uh, explain in, in a very wonderful way so that the knowledge can come really to the heart. And all your blessings, Mataji, all your blessings. No, I don't do it. You're wonderful. It's really, you're, I really like the way you deliver the message. It's really very powerful. Actually, it, re it really changes the heart. So I'm very Thank grateful. You. Thank you very much indeed. Very Thank good. you, Mataji. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chetna Mataji, you've raised your hand. Uh, yeah, uh, hi. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, this was uh, towards the beginning uh, where um, I think you mentioned that um, Arjuna's duty as a Kshatriya was to fight. Of course, now we live in a completely different world now where most of us have corporate jobs or, you know, um, well, that's our life now. So um, how do we know what our duty towards Krishna is in the world that we live in now. Can you give us some examples? Yes. Um, so Chetna Mataji, what um, Prabhupada says in some of his classes and then he's talking about is that in Vedic times, we used to have different, different samskaras, different roles for everybody and people followed that Varnashram system. Unfortunately, today we don't have the distinction of like a Brahmana, Kshatriya or, or whatever. But the thing is, what we have to realize is that in this age, the most important role that we have in developing our attachment to Krishna and realizing what our relationship with is chanting the holy name. That is the most important thing that we can do in this Kali Yuga. And Mahaprabhu came to deliver that message and Srila Prabhupada came to deliver that message. So sometimes we may think that, am I a Brahmana, am I a Kshatriya, am I a Vaishya? Doesn't matter because Prabhupada says in Kali Yuga, everybody is a Shudra. All of us, everybody is a Shudra. So, but in Kali Yuga, the one very good thing is that all of us have been given this opportunity to chant the holy name. It is the easiest way to build your relation with Krishna. And that is what all of us should do. Because see, the thing is, in, in uh, previous yugas, you could perform sacrifices, you could perform opulent deity worship because you had, you had all of those facilities. In today's yuga, you can't do that. But each and every one of us can chant the holy name. So all of us should do that. 
I sorry. That helps you yeah, one. yeah, it does. Sorry, though, I have one more follow up question. Yeah. You mentioned yeah, yeah. that you, I think you were chanting um, eight rounds. So mm -hmm. I think I'm not, I'm not sorry, I'm very new to this and I kind of don't have a, an understanding of it. No so no uh, when you, what is, what does one round of, what is one round of chanting made up of? Okay. So um, Chetna Mataji, if you uh, go to the manor, you will see um, we have our uh, Japa beads, which are called, um, I don't have the, I'll, I'll show you, but Japa beads, which is like um, a bead. Ah, one second, let me just show you. I have it here right now. With me. Let me just show you. Okay. Can you see this now? Can yes. you see these, mm -hmm. this mala, right? So yeah. this has, this has a head bead here. This is mm -hmm. the head bead. Yeah. And then it has 108 beads. Yeah, I, I have one of these. Yeah, okay. I have one of these at home. Yeah, so when you chant and you count all these, you chant, so on each single bead, you will chant the Maha Mantra, which is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So that is your one, one bead. Then you move on to the next bead and you do the same thing. You chant the Maha Mantra again. So you continue doing that till you reach the 108th bead. Sure. That is your one mantra. Ah, okay, okay. So it's it's literally chanting the entire mantra 108 times, which makes it one round. Okay, Perfect. awesome. Perfect. Okay. Understand. Yeah. The other, the other um, slight bit of subtle, subtle things that which you should be aware of is that you don't hold your mala with your index finger. Your index finger is just generally out like this, pointing. If you have a bead bag, the bags are in the, the beads are in the bead bag. Again, I'll show you that. I don't know if you have a bead bag, but. No, I don't know. Um, yeah, if you don't, you probably should try and get a bead bag because that keeps your beads safe. You keep your index finger out like this. You don't chant your mala with your index finger. You hold them like this with your second finger and thumb and just keep moving it like this. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So like this. And um, also I suggest that if anybody has any personal questions, you can always just text me and I'm, I'm more than happy to reply. But uh, for now, at least, yeah, this is called one mala. And then um, Prabhupada has asked all of us to chant at least 16 rounds every single day. Now that does not mean that somebody who's starting on their journey start with 16 rounds straight away. You can start with one round and then increase it to two and three and whatever. So like that, you can start chanting. Sure, sure, wonderful. Thank you very much. No problem. And uh, Namrata Mataji unfortunately uh, dropped off internet. So I'm just going to repeat what I said. Um, I'm sorry, if, before I do that, if there are any other questions, uh, if anybody wants to ask. Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, I just wanted to say so wonderful as Palika Mataji said, the way you present is very short and sweet. Short doesn't mean that you drop something, no. You just do exactly what is required, you know, to the pinpointing, and it is so easy to take it in uh, to a little, little memory of mine, I could say. And uh, so wonderful, really, really, I'm also very grateful. And I felt that she's speaking on behalf of me, but I thought, no, I also somehow have to say this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Even you. you answered to that, Mataji. Everything is so sweet. And thank, you so much. It's, thank you. Thank you very much, Mataji. Thank it's you. So all, all you, of your mercy, Mataji. All you your pick up the right message and you deliver it so nicely. So Mataji nice. Kumari, Mataji. Very, very nice. Beautiful. Very precise. Very precise on the point. Yes. Thank you. You know, Mataji, I think I think Krishna, Krishna in, in the heart knows. I mean, of course, Krishna in the heart knows everything. You will not believe today's verses were, were slightly difficult. They had a lot of deep philosophical points. And I was telling my friend that uh, they are quite deep and quite long. And I don't know how, whether I'll be able to get the message across. Obviously, I prayed to Guru Maharaj. And it's almost like, you know, Krishna through all of the devotees is saying that, yes, we have understood. It was, it was good. So thank you so much. I think I needed this today. So thank you very much. It was wonderful. Wonder amazing. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, so Mari Masaji. Such a wonderful class. It's very detailed. Oh. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. I think Madhukumari, because you've been a uh, you've been a qualified teacher. 
like you know, used to uh, teach in the college. So you know the technique, how to how to pick up the points and what to expand for people to receive the knowledge. I think yeah, you, I think you, you do need you do need some kind of a um, proper understanding how to deliver. You know everything, but not exactly. everybody not mm -hmm. everybody can deliver the whole thing in a, in yeah. a very precise way. I think that's what you had uh, when you were teaching and the, and you were delivering in a uh, in a in a you know in a, in a wonderful and uh, literature which is our Bhagavad Gita and that's if if we have this kind of a thing it really penetrates the heart and and the soul and it it helps a lot you know that's Thank what you. I my understanding so I, I'm really grateful to you Madhukumari yeah, really it's yeah it's like you know Krishna Krishna is always guiding you and using you as an instrument so maybe you know that that little bit of whatever intelligence that he gave me as a teacher i'm trying to use it over here which is which is his mercy you know Prabhupada's mercy you have a lot of I a lot of a lot of realization and you know and also very very pinpointing you know pinpointing that's what bring out that knowledge and then you're delivering in such a way it really penetrates the heart and purify the heart so that's why the understanding gets better. That's what I understand from your teaching. So it's really wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. You, I'm not. I'm not teaching. I'm only repeating whatever our previous speakers. I don't. I. I'm not qualified to teach you. I mean, you're so senior. I'm not qualified no, to no, teach no. you. Senior doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, if Thanks. there are no further questions, and I will address Namrata Mataji's question again. And I know some people you may want to leave. Um, and thank you very much for attending, but I will just speak to Namrata Mataji. And of course, you're all welcome to stay if you want to. So yes, Namrata Mataji, I'm sorry that your internet just dropped off. So I was saying that uh, don't think that because you are new, this is happening. It happens to all of us. We all have our good and bad days. Some days, you know, it's great. You wake up, you do all your rounds and you have a great day. And then some days you're not able to because you have to realize that we are in this material body, things do affect us. Lots of things affect us, you know, like, like our health could affect us, our mood could affect us, our family, there may be issues, you know, or sometimes, you know, you've got tensions at work, which is, you know, um, in, in a subtle way, just affecting you, you're not able to sleep properly, so you're not able to get up. But the main thing is to always remember that do not get discouraged. In spiritual life, the one thing that you must never do is get discouraged. And the other thing that you must always have, so there is one don't and one do. Don't is don't get discouraged. And do is always have hope. Always have hope because Krishna is there, Prabhupada is there. They are all there just to help you and guide you. Krishna is waiting for each one of us to turn towards him. So yes, we may stumble on the path. When a child is learning to walk, there are so many times that he stumbles, but the father never gives up. The mother never gives up. Krishna and Srila Prabhupada, they'll never give up on us. So don't get discouraged. There may be times, like I said, it happens with me sometimes, you know, and, and I guess it happens with others. I'm not sure, but it happens. Uh, but pick yourself up. The day you're not able to do it, don't beat yourself because that is one thing that I used to do. And it's so strange, my daughter, like, who's not even totally like, you know, Krishna conscious in that sense, she said to me that, uh, Mama, don't bring your ego into this. Because if you're not able to do it and you get upset about it, it's again your ego. There is There are reasons why it happens. You know, it's not like you intentionally didn't want to do it. So it's fine. Accept it. Accept that, okay, today I was not able to do it for whatever reasons. Pray to Krishna, pray to Srila Prabhupada, Try again, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Phases will come, accept those phases. It's fine, doesn't matter. We are not on the platform of a pure devotee as yet. So we are all sadhakas. And when we are trying, there will be success and failure. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Thank you, I thank hope, you, Mataji. Uh, that that made sense. me cry almost. Thank you, Mataji, that was wonderful, thank you. No problem. I hope that encourages you to never, ever give up. Absolutely. Thank you. Hare Krishna.
No problem. Okay. Um, Auntie P, that... that is so wonderful that you bought the point of ego and oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> if you start exactly. keep on going on speaking, I think, no, I don't think anyone wants to leave. Uh, <laughs> Uh, actually, it's funny, Nitai Mata Mataji, but my daughter, you know, sometimes you will not believe, but sometimes she speaks such wonderful things that I actually do a double take and I think, oh my God, you know, she's so right. So she, yeah. and you know, it's your family who can actually hold a mirror to you and she does that to me very often. So, you know, yeah. thank, thank you for her. So, yeah. Actually, yeah, it is, it, it is so wonderful because uh, the moment we think we can do it, that means we are not a sadhaka, you know. Just because we are a sadhaka means we there are chances of failing. Correct, correct. See, that's yeah. why, see, just not let pride come in. See, I was listening recently to one class, okay. I was listening to one class by Goranda Darshan Prabhu and he was talking about um, Sudama. Now, I have never heard this bit, this, this thing that I'm going to share. And he said that Sudama was proud. Now, can you, I, I don't, I don't think any of you must have heard this. Why? So he was proud of his renunciation. He was proud yes. that he's so completely detached. You see, so, you know, this pride is such a subtle thing that it can enter anybody because we are in the material world. We are always under the influence of Maya and Maya is trying to get to us in one way or the other. So sometimes, you know, this pride may enter us that I am doing this perfectly. I wake up in the morning, Brahma Murat, all my 16 rounds are done. I am such a great devotee. You know, so we Krishna does not want that pride to enter your heart. He's always looking out for you. Remember that. Whatever happens is for the best. He's always looking out for you. Actually, Mataji, I want to share something. The day you yeah. don't chant your rounds up to yeah. you, uh, you know it. Oh, this yeah. is not the way I want to do it. The next day you have more ent enthusiasm and yes. you want to you really want to do for Krishna next day. Otherwise, you think, oh, oh I can do it. It's okay. Yeah. I'm fine. So the so moment true. you calm down, then you know, oh, that is your state. So you Krishna know. is trying to bring <laughs> you closer to him by taking shelter of him, by yeah. begging him that please help me and yeah. not depending on your own endeavors and Endeavor strength. And, and glorifying yourself, you know. Even nobody yeah. is glorifying, but you try to glorify <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so true. So yeah. true. Thank you. Thank Mother. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So wonderful. Thank you. Um, I don't think there are any other questions. There are a few comments. Um, thank you to everybody who has given these comments. I'm so glad if this is helping you. This is helping me so much when I prepare for the lecture. So thank you for giving me the opportunity and hearing me and coming every evening. Thank you so much. So if um, there are no further comments, then we will end. Thank you for the class. Lovely class. Thank you. Thank you so much.